leader in live and emerging high-tech coverage. Hey everyone, welcome back to theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. Wrapping up our three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage of Snowflake Summit 2023 with about, Dave, 12,000 people or so here. This is the fifth annual Snowflake Summit, the biggest we've seen. It's like a downhill race, whoosh. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, that was a good pun. Yeah, thank you. I, I got that. <laughs> We're very pleased to welcome back Denise Pearson, the CMO of Snowflake. Denise, great to have you. Congrats on a very successful event. Thank you so much, so good to be here with you again. It's great to be here. It's been quite a week here yes. at Snowflake Summit, and uh, we just have a few hours uh, left until we, until we wrap up. Talk about yeah. the scale of this year's summit. As I mentioned, 12,000 or so. Last year was bustling. This year is even more bustling. Yeah. Talk about the scale of the event. How does it compare to years past? Again, I mean, look at, we started in 2019 with 1,500 people in San Francisco, and back then it was all around you know, cloud analytics. And if you look at the partner ecosystem, then it was the ELT companies, it was the BI companies, and it was you know, regional SIs. And today, you know, we have over 200 partners here exhibiting, uh, and it's, it's just incredible to bring this entire ecosystem um, together. What are some of your key takeaways so far? You mentioned you got in Saturday, nonstop the last four days. Obviously, Monday night kicked off with that great fireside chat with Jensen Huang and Frank. What are some of your key takeaways from this year's event? Well, I mean, it's more the, the, the energy in the ecosystem, and now everyone wants to see a path forward when it comes to AI and generative AI as well. I think everyone has been looking for, you know, what we're going to announce this week, and uh, I think one of the biggest announcements this week, of course, was the um, announcement with our NVIDIA you know, partnership and how we're going to bring generative AI to the, the enterprise. And uh, we also made a big announcement with Microsoft uh, on Monday as well on how we're expanding our, our technology integration with them uh, to tap into their AI and generative AI solutions, but also how we're going to expand you know, our go-to-market um, efforts with Microsoft as well. So it's been a... Uh, an incredible week, it's probably been the biggest week in Snowflake's history from a product announcement standpoint yeah. and also the announcements of the expanded you know, partnerships across the board. Yeah, I mean, you've mentioned ecosystems a couple of times. The, the uh, product announcements, I called it a fire hose. What did you call it, like the t-shirt? The t-shirt cannon at the, the cannon. basketball yeah. game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that was good, but uh, you know, the ecosystems, it, it, I said the other day in one of my little videos, the hallmark of a cloud company <clears throat> is ecosystem. And it's not just, technology providers or sellers, like the GSIs and the you know, partners, it's others that are actually developing on top of a platform. And that's what really is differentiating you from some of the other you know, interesting early stage companies, now you're not early stage anymore, but watching that ascendancy, the ecosystem is, 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 is a fundamental vector of growth in your strategy, isn't yeah. it? And again, I mean, last year we started this whole journey mm. in regards to bringing app development to Snowflake. We're now a year later and we're seeing entire categories building and re-platforming on Snowflake across um, supply chain management, cybersecurity, marketing. Just in marketing as an example, Last year we launched our modern marketing data stack report featuring 50 companies that are building marketing solutions on top of Snowflake. This report coming out now is going to have over 100 companies and solutions that are built on Snowflake that are solving specific um, challenges uh, you know, for, us in, for us in marketing. So, uh, and we're doing the same thing across every single you know, industry. So you folks, you both have a marketing gene. I don't have that gene, but I'm interested in how you think about personas and the expanding and changing personas that you, you target and personalities that you go after and that we want to attract into the Snowflake ecosystem. And that has also been a big change over the past couple of years. We've moved more towards an industry you know, orientation and um, these solutions we built, we built this industry specific you know, data cloud across financial services and now also manufacturing and, and telecom, you know, retail, healthcare, and also public, public sector. Public sector media, yeah. and media is exactly, another one. Yes. Yeah, and these yeah. industry data clouds is all about really uh, aligning with the mission of those companies. So it's more aligning on the business side. So I mean, Snowflake is really all about bringing the business you know, opportunities together with, with technology. 
So now across the enterprise, of course, we are marketing to everything from developers, data scientists, data engineers, IT security, of course, a big, big part of, of a data strategy as well, but also the business side. And we're doing this together with the ecosystem, because many of these companies that are building on top of Snowflake now, they're building those business-specific applications. Again, across marketing, those 100 companies we talked about, they are actually going in and solving the specific challenges we have in marketing. We would now also have companies, of course, focus on, on finance yeah. and, um, and security and, um, and HR and um, you know, everything. So yeah. So how do you service those different constituencies in, in, in an event like this? Do you have little mini events inside of an event or is that sort of what you're planning for the future? Yeah, there are many mini events you know, within uh, the summit. You know, we have our, of course, our industry you know, pavilions as well. So a lot of the uh, specific industries are going in, in there, having, uh, having specific uh, conversations around the challenges they're facing, and uh, it's just a lot of mini conferences within the conference mm. that how do you are taking place. Yeah, how do you extend the reach of this beyond four days throughout the rest of the year to reach customers globally and to continue to have the message and the reach with those key personas. What's the plan to do that? Yeah, of course, I mean, we've had a virtual component of Summit as well, so we had well over 10,000 live attendees across the uh, four days here as well. We, we fully understand that every company don't, don't send you know, people to, to Vegas at this time. You know, there, are, there are travel budget constraints out there as well. So it was very important to extend the content to all of them. But starting in, in August, we're going back on our Data Cloud World Tour again. This year we're going to go to 25 stops around the world, so uh, that's how we're extending the content here. And of course the ecosystem here will be with us uh, on this tour. And many of our ecosystem partners are very regional specific as well. We have regional specific partners, of course, in Japan and, uh, and across you know, Europe, so they will be with us on, on that uh, tour. And the, the conference here, it's very much about our customers, right? So this is essentially more than 80% are existing you know, customers who are really coming here to understand what they now can do with, with Snowflake you know, after this week. Uh, the tour is very much about going after new, new companies. So it's almost 80% you know, prospects uh, around the world. I think we have to remember that many companies are still in that legacy on-prem world, and they will never be able to take advantage of all these applications we have now in AI and generative AI if they don't migrate over to the cloud. So there's so much work still to do in terms of helping these companies uh, get onto a more modern data platform. Yeah. Good news for you. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So in five years, you mentioned starting back in 2019 with 1,500 people. Here we are in 2023, back from COVID, 12,000 plus people, how do you, what do you think keeps customers and partners coming back year after year and attracting more? I mean, customer success. I mean, uh, customers are coming here because they're incredibly successful on, on Snowflake and of course, you know, with the rest of these, these products in the ecosystem. And we have always had this mission and of being the most customer-centric company in, in the technology uh, world, and this is sort of where we're, we're, we never stop. There's no, you know, Frank Slootman, right? There's no, no complacency, you know, here. Every day, you know, we work so hard to, to earn the trust, you know, from our customers, and again, keep on innovating, you know, every single second of the day to really uh, be their best, you know, possible, you know, partner. So um, it's all, all comes back to that extreme, relentless focus on, on the customer and a partner strategy and ecosystem like this, it's the most customer-centric go-to-market strategy they can have, because we don't solve all the problems for our customers. It's the whole ecosystem that does that. And our customers want to work with a vendor that really integrate well with others, that bring them a complete suite you know, of solutions. And that's what we're doing here with the, um, with the ecosystem. And today, on the marketing side, it's not about marketing Snowflake anymore. It's really about serving the ecosystem. And Summit has truly become a marketing platform for this ecosystem. Many of these companies are really rely on us now to drive demand, to drive brand awareness. So that's really our, our commitment to all these companies here to be that platform in, in the future. 
we've talked to a number of startups this week, yeah. and basically their go-to-market plan is to come inside of Snowflake, get product market fit, and then go to market fit will take care of itself because yes. of what you just said. They'll be able to monetize through your engine. Yes. The very powerful I mean, you know, it's, flywheel. It's incredible when you hear these companies that are building an application and they can go to market with it in a matter of a few, few months. Yeah. And um, mm -hmm. that was impossible you know, before. You have to think about distribution, monetization, marketing. We're providing all that for them. We have our Power by Snowflake marketing program, and all these Power by customers and companies, they're now integrated into all our marketing. So for instance, when there are companies that are building you know, solutions for financial services, we're bringing them into our uh, financial services industry data cloud, and we are out there helping them go to market and to drive demand. And if they're successful, you know, Snowflake is going to be successful too. When you yeah. think about starting a company, you know, pre-cloud obviously you had to put a lot of capex in. Cloud changed that. Yes. And then what happened was you'd raise a ton of money, and most of the money would go to promotion and go to market. That's beginning to change now as well. And now you have you have generative AI. I wonder, as a CMO, how are you using generative AI yourself? Uh, I we use a lot of. AI in, in our marketing, and what has been a game changer for us is forecasting. For us to be able to do things like predictive forecasting of our pipeline. Marketing, right, it's all about, you don't want to overspend, you don't want to underspend it either. So what we can do now with AI and machine learning to really predict, you know, what is our pipeline going to be six months from now in which territories around the world, that really helps us you know, adjust our marketing investment to make sure we're always at that exact level of, of investment. And uh, that has been a game changer for us. Very scientific. Um, yes, generative AI in B2B marketing, it's still very, of course, experimental at this, this point. Of course, you know, I think we're all using you know, chat GPT to help us you know, with introductions of, of letters and emails and those things, and we just, you know, we want to see what's going what's gonna <laughs> to give us back. Um, but we're, it's still at that experimental phase, but I, I'm sure when we sit here a year from now, mm. there's going to be real game-changing use cases that allows us to do things so much more efficiently than we've ever done before. I mean, I'm looking back, when I started my career in marketing 30 years ago, when we did market research, we were looking for, okay, who are the top 50 companies in this region and what are their website addresses? That, of course, you can get back now in a matter of seconds, yeah. thanks to um, you know, chat GPT, et cetera. But, um, so yeah, there's going to be, it's, it's going to be just, um, it's going to be even hard to predict uh, at the moment, you know, what we'll be able to do. But a year from yeah. now, let's break some news here, Denise. Where are we going to be? A year from now, we are um, we're moving to a more cooler space. We're going to move back west. We announced this morning that we are taking Summit back to um, San Francisco. That's that's our that's our home. That's where we we started. Um, we love the San, city of San Francisco. So we announced today with the uh, with the support of the mayor of San Francisco um, that yeah we're bringing back the largest um, uh, conference for for data apps and. AI. Uh, June 3rd to 6th, you know, mark your calendars. I mean, it's, yeah, it's time to, to, to book the hotel room. Yes. So it's going gonna, it's gonna, <laughs> it's gonna, it's gonna fill up, but again, San Francisco is an incredible place for a conference. We look forward to really, you know, give our biggest support to the city as well and uh, collaborating with the city on just uh, providing an incredible experience for all attendees. All our attendees are very excited about coming to San Francisco too. We're just hearing everyone being super excited about this uh, announcement. And next year, we are also going to combine Summit with our developer conference too. So we usually do our build conference in November. We're still going to do that this year, but next year we're also going to bring build into Summit. So we're probably looking at an attendance on upwards to 20,000 people. So Moscone is just going to be the perfect value for that, and uh, we're going to turn the city blue. Um, I love it. First ah, that's fantastic. Moscone, the shiny new Moscone. We've done a number of events there. It's great. Yes. Congratulations on a great show and, uh, and an awesome messaging, and looking forward to next year as well. Thank you so much. Thanks. Yeah. Thank Thanks. you for joining us, really sharing your key takeaways from the fifth annual Snowflake Summit. 
what the attendees, what you're hearing from partners, where we're going to be next year, and how you're going to really extend this message with the World Tour throughout the rest of the year. We look so much forward to seeing you next year, Denise. Thanks for your time. Yeah, thank you. Great to see you. For Denise Pearson and Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin. You've been watching theCUBE's three-day coverage of Snowflake Summit live from Las Vegas Caesars Forum. We're going to see you very soon, but next year at Snowflake Summit, mark your calendars June, June 3rd through 6th, San Francisco. If you missed any of our Snowflake coverage, you can find all of it on theCUBE.net. All of our CUBE content lives there regardless. Any of our analysis, editorial content about Snowflake Summit and other events, siliconangle.com. We want to thank you so much for watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage.